IFF captures what is most aromatic in nature, distilled and harnessed for all our senses. As the company strives to maximize the world's resources, can investors maximize their portfolios with IFF? Sometimes the market just gets it wrong. About 13 months ago, International Flavors and Fragrances, the company that comes up with proprietary scents and tastes for all sorts of consumer packaged goods companies, announced it was acquiring Fruiteram. It's $7.1 billion. Wall Street didn't like it. Stock got just obliterated. Crazy. Uh, 140s down to 120s. And every time it seemed to get his groove back, it would roll over. That is until this past month. Lately, IFF has caught fire. It's up about 9% for the month of June. It held a very bullish analyst meeting a week and a half ago. So could this stock have more upside? Let's take a closer look with Andreas Fibig. He's the chairman and CEO of International Flavors and Fragrances. Get a better sense of how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Fibig, welcome back to Mad Money. Andrea, good, it's good, good to, to see, see you. you. You know, first I got to say, uh, to your great credit, when you did that big equity offering, the stock got hit, you came on. And you yeah. said, this is a great opportunity. And not only was it a great opportunity, but it was one of the best opportunities I've seen in a long time. What happened between when you got the money and closed the food around and now? Yeah, I think very important for us was to explain what it means for IFF closing on Fruiterum. And I think now many more people understand what the quality of the asset is. What we do, did during the Investor Day, actually, we showed them all what can we do in terms of the expanded customer base, what can we do with natural. 30,000 customers 30,000 customers. 75% of the uh, portfolio of uh, Fruiterum was naturals. Uh, we have seen a lot of adjacent businesses. We do now 20% of our sales with adjacent businesses. And we demonstrated our R&D pipeline, which is un match what we ever have seen in IFF history. What's incredible is you did this at a time of incredible skyrocketing costs. It didn't, somehow, it didn't make you skip a beat. Yeah. I, I would say uh, it was certainly, uh, we did a great due diligence and we made really sure that we don't overpay. But actually, now after seven months, eight months after we closed the deal, we really feel strong about the acquisition and we feel strong about the opportunities, actually, not just get the cost savings out right. of 145 million, but to grow our top line significantly as well. But your raw costs are what I was, you know, yeah. you're, in your presentation, your analyst meeting, I was just stunned by how the most inflationary period for something you can't control, and yet what you could control, the bottom line was superb. Yeah, that, that's true. What we saw, in particular on the sense side, that right. uh, the material costs went up significantly. We worked very closely with our customers to, to raise the prices. We looked at re-engineering our products as well. And I think we are coming out of this crisis quite nicely. Another thing which is probably helping IFF as well is that we had a very good backward integration. We could do some of these products and some of these substances on our, on our own, which helped a lot with our customers. Right, I gotta talk about what's going on in this. Uh, there's kind of a craze. Right now there's this thing beyond me, okay? Yeah. And one of the things you taught me is that taste is also smell. Yeah. That you have to have the texture but you also have what it go, what goes down. Could you explain to me why some of these things work and why some don't? Because people suddenly, there have been these, you know, they've had these synthetic hamburgers forever. Suddenly it's a big craze among the millennials. Yeah, no. I, I would say, first of all, there is much more awareness that this is a very healthy choice. That's number one. Right. It is very sustainable as well for the environment. So that's, that's number, number two that matters to the millennials right now. And number three, I believe right now, at least I can talk from the IFF point of view, we have the technology to do that and to do it in a very nice way. Actually, what we did during the Investor Day, we did pulled pork 100% out of plant-based protein, and people loved it. You see what is doable or what we can do today. Now, the difference between natural, organic, these are all things that seem very exact, subjective. Yeah, uh, some, it, you have definitions. Uh, it's certainly different in Europe compared to the, to the U.S., but one thing is clear, it has to be derived from natural ingredients, and that's where we are really good. We are now one of the world's largest, biggest natural extractors. So, because we get this out of natural fields and natural materials, and we're really good at it. Right, explain it versus, say, molecules. I yes. mean, you, people prefer 
what you just described into molecules. Yeah, absolutely. We see it on, on the flavor side, for example, on the taste side, that 90% of the briefs or the people are asking us for doing something for them is for naturals, out of organic and natural materials. And you see, it's a trend here to stay. And Fruiterum definitely must have helped you. I mean, this is these smaller firms all want that. A lot, a lot. It's, it, it, this is really intriguing to me. I, I think that with the human genome, have you been able to figure out even more? Because you keep talking about innovation. You have flavors. It seems like you have the edge on what we really like versus what we know. Well, what we see is we do around about 500,000 consumer interviews every single year. 500,000. I've never been interviewed by you. Yeah, we probably should do that. <laughs> yeah. So because I, I guess that we really know with our consumer insights what the consumer wants, and that's how we work with our customers together to come up with really the best choice for them. Well, one of those, I mean, I understand that vanilla is the most popular. Yeah. It smells like when you were younger at home. How, you seem to know what we crave in a good way. Yeah, what people like, and then you see that vanilla is not vanilla. The vanilla from Madagascar is very different in the smell and the taste and the vanilla from Indonesia or from Uganda. So you have to see nuances here as well. Well, who knows this stuff? I mean, you've probably got many tasters. You probably have unbelievable scientists. I always think that what must happen is that there's no chance to this. It's, it, you understand, we were running pictures of raspberries behind us. There's raspberries with seeds. There's yeah. raspberries for jam. I mean, do you guys know what I like in, in, in jam and in, in I seeds? I don't know whether we know what you like, oh, well, but okay. in general, I think what the general taste is. But how is it do. because of the 500,000 yeah, interviews? Yeah, we're getting it in, and we're testing it with our panel group and then we come up with the best solution. Now, you've got a very, uh, you have a lot of international business, you have a strong dollar, not necessarily good. Uh, uh, are there tariffs on some of your products? Right now, we are, we are lucky enough. So we have planned for Brexit. I think we have plan A, B, and C, and you need all these plans, I can tell you. Yeah. And China is very benign to us. It's not material on, uh, on our side right now. Let me ask you an odd question, maybe the last question, but... Do you think in this time, I think it's never been more important that you have an international outlook, that you can speak many languages, I know you can, that you really have a purview that is much more than domestic. It seems like that's a real advantage these days for a CEO. No, absolutely, not just for the CEO, for a company which is doing 80% of the business outside of the U.S., I think you really have to know what's, what's going on in the world. I'm up next, uh, tomorrow actually, to, uh, to India, then I go to Vietnam, then I go to China, and then I go back to Europe. So I think you have to know what's happening in these areas. Well, well, I got to tell you, you certainly do. And congratulations. Thank you for coming on when the stock was in the 120s. That's <laughs> when, well, now it's still good, but that was really the time. That's Andreas Fibig. He's the chairman CEO of International Flavors and Fragrances. Just had a very big analyst meeting, all very digestible. You can tell you, it tells you exactly why I like it. Mad Money's back here to the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.